Welcome to Le Grand Voyage with Chateau Malartic Le Gravier. Look up the word chateau in a French dictionary and you'll find it refers to a range of similar buildings. A chateau can be a castle or a palace. It can be a fort, a mansion or even a stately home. But if you travel to Bordeaux, you'll find something rather odd. It's certainly not short of beautiful castles, especially on the left bank in Medoc and Grave, where there are plenty of beautiful mansions, gorgeous historic buildings. Yet when we dig into the record books, we find an anomaly. In Bordeaux, there used to be far fewer chateaux, just a handful. And many of the wines that we think of as chateau today originally weren't called chateau at all. Then suddenly there were a lot of chateaux. And finally, today, we have a number that's somewhere in between. How is this so? Well, in Bordeaux, a chateau is a chateau, but it's also something else. A chateau can have no chateau at all. What's changed? Well, before the French Revolution, the best vineyards were owned by local lords. In fact, they owned all the vineyards because they were the only landowners. But they kept the very best plots to themselves. And to this day, some of the region's finest vineyards sit around extraordinarily beautiful and magnificent chateau buildings. We, the sort we tend to think about when we imagine a chateau in our imagination. And some of those grand chateaux sold their wines. But until the 19th century, the vast majority of Bordeaux wines were sold by merchants in barrels. It was just red Bordeaux or claret if it was in England. And there was a significant price difference. When Samuel Pepys ordered a bottle of Chateau Haute-Briand with his friends in the mid-17th century, it cost about three times as much as a regular bottle of nameless Bordeaux. Only a very few estates had the cachet to sell as an individual Chateau wine. Most customers just bought according to the reputation of the merchant. Then there was a shift, in fact several shifts, the 1855 classification gave newfound status to the 61 estates in Medoc and Grave and the 28 wines from Sauterne and Barsac. This was pretty swiftly followed in 1857 when France introduced its first trademark law. This said that estates should add a distinctive feature like a chateau or an abbey or clos to their traditional name. Customers loved it, so estates all across the region started to call themselves Chateau. Some became quite imaginative. They might take on a local feature, historic words for hills like Mouton, Cos, Lafitte, Oat and Brion. They all appear. Others took the names of their owners, a few, Mouton Rothschild, Lafitte Rothschild, Smith Oat Lafitte, took both or several a local feature and the family who owned it. This accelerated in the 1920s as estates began to bottle their own wines. As they sold wine direct to overseas customers, the pre-revolutionary glamour that came with an aristocratic name like Chateau seemed to add to their appeal. We can see it in the numbers. In 1898, the authoritative Cox, the Ferré Wine Guide, listed 3,800 chateau and 6,000 estate owners. But then through the 20th century, the pace accelerated. The number of chateaux grew more than fourfold. There were almost 15,000 chateaux recorded across the region in the middle of the century. Of course, the danger was that it wasn't entirely clear what a chateau was and what it wasn't. If it wasn't a building, well, what was it? Fortunately for us, the trusty European Economic Commission, the EEC, stepped in, in the shape of the EEC Commission Regulation number 997-81 of the 26th of March 1981. This declared that a wine can only be called a chateau if the wine concerned was made exclusively from grapes harvested from wines belonging to that vineyard and the wine-making process was carried out there. Not to nitpick with the lawmakers in Brussels, but I think they meant from 
from grapes harvested from vines belonging to that vineyard. But we get the point, it's probably more important that the French version was correct, which it was. And yet, since that EC regulation, we've seen fewer chateaux. Not because the idea of a chateau is any less powerful, it still is. It still captures the spirit of Bordeaux for many of us. And while it's true that not every estate has a 19th century architectural wonder at the end of the drive, it's a region blessed with some extraordinary architecture. No, sh the chateau shrinkage is because of a trend to fewer, bigger wineries in the region. Today there are around 6,000 chateaus. Bigger vineyards are more cost-effective to run, and the wines benefit from the extra investment that their owners can make in the winery and in the vineyards. And with 6,000, there are still plenty to go at. And we'll have more to go at tomorrow when we have more stories from Bordeaux with Le Grand Voyage. See you then.